Hi, I'm Corey. Welcome to Creating with Scraps. Today's mass make is one that I have done before. I believe I, no, I wasn't in the Scrap Busters. I think it was in Flips, Flaps, and Folds. But it's basically this. It's a tri-pocket. My next section that I'm going to be working on in the idea journal is three-fold pockets, or that's not correct. The a piece that has three pockets or tuck spots. And so this is one of my absolute favorites because it does just use scraps. And then it's got, um, it can be oriented a couple different ways. It can be, you know, to the left or to the right, and it can be on the top also, but it's got the one, two with, you know, utilizing the back of it, two, and then three another little pocket on the front and I, I use this a lot and I really like it so I thought it would be a good one for a mass make and then I'll really quickly for anybody who's new go over how I made that so this is basically what it's been um, made from this was my um, uh, inspiration that's the word I'm looking for but also in our flips flaps and folds book we did here it is as a really small one because this is a, the Tim Holtz paper little scrapbooklet that I did. And here I tabbed it so I wouldn't forget. Here it's the same thing only it's a much much larger version. Sorry about the shadows. I've got my sewing machine up because I prefer this with a sewing machine so it creates some crazy shadows. But here it is the same idea. It's just a much larger piece. It's got you know a pocket in the back it's got the pocket on the front, and then it's got a pocket right here, a divoted pocket or a, a notched pocket right here. So, um, yeah, so it come, you can do it in a couple different sizes. You can, okay, there's more stuff in there. And I also used it in, in a little bit different way in the postage stamp book I did. And I think I marked it here. Yeah, see, it's the same pocket but I needed uh, to change it up a little bit. So I just added a tag on the front of it. So there's the pocket on the, you know, the one pocket, then there's the pocket here, and then there's a pocket in the very back, but I wanted to change the profile. So I just added a tag on top of it to the side. And so by adding that one little bit, <clears throat> pardon me, it changed it up quite a bit. And so I am going to show you how I did that. And I'll put this right here so that I don't forget. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. There we go. Okay. Um, I'll show you my mass makes, the recent ones. I've been doing a bunch of other things, so I haven't done nearly as many as I'd like. But I've commented on and looked at and enjoyed a bunch of different videos. Uh, let's see. Where do I want to start? A lot of people did master boards. So I used master boards as a tag. Many people did tags. So I did a mass make on tags and I used up again. Shoot. Sorry about that shadow. It's just kind of, kind of a bummer. I apologize. Um, so I did a mass make on tags in different sizes, different toppers. I used up the rest of my die cuts. So that'll be coming. And then, um, I had another idea for using fabric scraps and lace scraps. So that'll be coming up sometime soon too. Anyway, just a mass make on tags. <clears throat> Pardon me. And then I followed Julie at Camilla. No, no, this one's not Julie. I did follow Julie. But Sue at Paper Inspirations. I was listening to her. So it ended up being what I made wasn't exactly what she made. But it's kind of a basic Tracy two side. And it's got a pocket on the front and then it flips over. I put a magnet in it and then it's got a little notepad on the back. And so I've got a, you know, a little scrap pad on the back. The magnet will hold it over the top of your page. <coughs> Pardon me. And then this is the master board that I made using ledger and I tucked it into the pocket. So I did, I don't know, seven or eight of those. And they're all the same. Essentially, they're, they all look a, different because I use different papers but they all have the magnet and they all have a pocket on the front and they all have a notepad on the back. And I used some images that I had and some of the vellum stickers because I had been 
Oh, I know. I had been following Julie, and Julie used vellum stickers, so I used vellum stickers because I had already had them out. So, again, the backs are all the same, but the fronts are just a little bit different. And these, instead of using four-inch strip wide strips like Sue did, I used three-inch wide strips because that's what I had. Actually, I just cut some pieces, so some are a little bit wider. And then here, I just had a little smidge of the... Um, master board left so I just used it as a as a border piece for my journaling card so there are those and then I did did truly play along with Julie and Julie had used the envelope punch board to make um, some file folders and, and I've seen it before I mean most of us have but it was just a really cool reminder and I think that's for me one of the benefits of doing these mass makes is just a reminder of things now I found I used a scrap of Tim Holtz. I don't, I found that I personally don't care for it as much when it's printed on the inside. So I used, um, oh, and I accidentally cut off my tab. So I just made this into a little booklet, but I found that I like the solid color inside a little bit better. So that's what um, I did. And I like it both ways with two tabs like here. I think that's what Julie did. And then just with one tab, especially because I made smaller sizes because that's what I have. And um, really, really pleased with the way those came out. A variety of sizes just based on the scraps that I had. So you can see it doesn't have to be a big scrap or, you know, you don't have to cut paper down to size unless you want to. Here it is with the two tabs again. And then this one, there you go. So I did do that. A um, lot of inspiration. Thank you all so very much for joining in. And it's... Um, been really delightful to revisit some some old things. Okay, so here are the variations of some of the ones that I have done. Um, where did I put that? Oh, I put it right here. So you can have it oriented with the pocket on the left or the pocket on the right, or you can orient it so that it goes sideways like this, like I have in this little booklet here. Um, yeah, there we go. You get to pick based on what you need, and I did three of them with the tall pocket on the left, and I used tracing paper, coffee dyed tracing paper, but I'll go over that in just a second. You can use any of a variety of things, and I only did that because I really wanted that pocket to show through. One, I had scraps of these left, but two, I really wanted to be able to see whatever tag or what have you in that pocket. So I did three oriented with the tall pocket on the left and then I think I did four with the tall pocket on the right and these are a variety of thicknesses just based on I shouldn't say thicknesses these are a variety of widths based on the scraps I had and you can you know tuck more when you glue it into your book you can tuck more in the back but you've also got three a total of three pockets there so I did several like this and these are all Tracy's wallpaper. I don't remember if it's grungy or tattered. Tattered I think is paint and grungy I think is wallpaper but I could have it backwards and and so I'll, I'll link Tracy's shop below and you can have a uh, have a look to see if that's what you're interested in. Anyway I used coffee dyed tracing paper on these and I really hope I've been in frame. I apologize. And then and then I had an idea. Well, I didn't have the idea. Sue from Paper Inspirations did something, I think it was last year, but it could, be, could have been earlier this year, where she took transparency or window film and put gold leafing in it. Or, I'm sorry for my big old arm there, but gold leafing flakes. Now this I got on Amazon, but any gold leafing flakes or leaf flakes, I've got copper and silver and gold. Any will work. It doesn't have to be a particular brand or style. They're all essentially similar. And what I did was I took two pieces of transparency, sandwiched the flakes in them. And so when you put your, oh gosh, that transparency film, when you put your tag or whatever paper you're putting in there, the gold leafing or copper leafing really stands out. I just thought that was super fun. So you've got the pocket in the back, the pocket in the front, and then the pocket to the side. These I made a little bit narrower than this, but it goes all the way down. And then based on the papers, I used, ooh, there we go, I hope that works. I used copper and I did a couple in gold because it, that's what matched the paper. And a couple in gold 
I just think that's a really cool effect and it's super flat. I usually put flowers, dried flowers or, you know, images or something in there, but this, this is super flat, which is nice. And then I mixed one. I didn't have any papers that went with silver, so I didn't use that, but this one I did both copper and gold and I, because of the flowers and what it called for. And that was really a lot of fun. So my process for this, since I'm not going to actually make this on film because it's kind of fiddly and I get the little gold leafing and flakes everywhere, but Two, two pieces of window film or transparency cut to the same size. I sewed the top piece. Um, I find that this works a lot better with a sewing machine or hand stitching it, but you can of course glue it if you choose. I just think it works. It holds tighter, I guess is a good way to put it, with the stitching. And then, so I stitched the top and then I put the gold leafing things in and then I put it in to place and then I stitched around and I'll show you show you exactly how I do that and because in this little booklet I let's see what color oh here we go this one will work so and I because the sample had one of these circle flowers I just made a circle flower one circle flower to show you how to do it and then I'll probably mass make some of these because my my stash is a little low all right, so this is super simple, simple project, but I really like it. But before I get started, you don't have to have vellum or coffee dyed tracing paper or window transparency. Uh, let's see, like that. You can use any of many things. Uh, here is some of the window transparency, right? And I get, you can get yours from packaging. I have a box of... Um, report covers that I had had from school. It's an older box, but I have a whole bunch of those because of that. And then here is just some coffee dyed tracing paper, inexpensive tracing paper. Now you can use solid paper. It just gives you a completely different look. One of the things I really like about this is that it's see-through, but if that's what you've got, you certainly can use that. Another thing that I didn't make any samples of, but maybe I'll use it now, is vellum because vellum is mostly, oh here it is, mostly see-through, right? So you can still read the words on this particular one. It's a quote by Lincoln that I really, I really like. So you can use vellum on this too. And it, and it, again, there can be scraps. Like this is a solid vellum. That one is the one with a quote on it. Here is a pattern vellum. It's got polka dotties. Here is a vellum that has, uh, I don't know how you can see that, but it's kind of like got little blue cloud flecklies in it and then colored vellum. So whatever you've got, I guess is what I'm trying to say is it will work great. Just, just use what you've got and, and give it a try if you're interested. All right. Um, okay. So to make this, I took a rectangle. See, this goes with the rectangle series and this works great with one-sided paper or with two-sided paper. If you've got two-sided paper and you choose to, you can just fold it over, right? Like with the Tim Holtz paper, but it works really well with the one-sided paper also. And um, I think I'm gonna use this one just because I don't use pink very often. So uh, actually, you know what? If I'm gonna use the quote, you kind of lose the image behind it. So I'm gonna go with something a little more solid. I mean, not solid, solid, but a little more solid and maybe something with a little bit darker colors so that it stands through okay good maybe i'll do that hmm oh i really like that one all right so i guess i changed my mind again i'm going to use this one and this is again the wallpaper and i like the fact that i can see the color through it with the lighter colors it didn't show as much so grab a scrap of rectangular paper size again doesn't matter I am going to tear the edge of this and ink it simply because that's what I like but you certainly don't have to and I want it to be close to the top of the quote simply because it's a kind of a deeper quote and the paper I have isn't all that big so I'm just going to tear a lot of times with vellum and um, thinner pieces like that I'll just use my trimmer okay and then I'm going to ink the top really quickly it is much easier if you ink this prior to beginning much easier um, 
but you can't it can be done if you don't and if you're not an inker well that, that just saves a step right there all right so this will be the vellum piece i put on and here is my pocket or here's the peep piece of paper I'm going to use for my pocket and then I just have to decide do I want my pocket the tall pocket on the right or on the left and what section and how wide um, you know this is a what a six inch seven inch piece of paper something like that so maybe I'll go up to two inches on here and so I'll trim off the section I'm going to cut uh, I'm going to do one and three no I'm going to do two because then with my stitching on there I can do a one and three quarter inch pocket tag to go into my pocket. So I did two inches so that when I cut it down, um, when I cut down my tag, I can do it at one and three quarters. So got two pieces now, and I like the fact that the edges kind of match, so I'll leave that. I'm going to ink the edge because, again, it's a lot easier to ink prior to putting it down. And then I'm going to take a notch or a divot out of the top. But actually, I don't know. I guess I will. I normally do, but because this paper is so pretty, I don't want to take too much. And I don't, you know, everybody use the supplies you've got. But if you're going to, if you're new and you're going to invest in something, I use circle punches in a variety of sizes, probably more than any other tool other than a trimmer. So if you're considering purchases and such, a variety of circle punches is, is a great choice. All right, because of the size of this, I'm just going to take out, uh, and I'm not, as Tracy would say, pants. I'm pants at centering it, but we'll, we'll go with that. And again, I'm going to ink this top bit just because it's easier to do now, and then the rest I can ink later on. Okay, so I've got my pocket inked, and I've got my edge of my vellum inked. And you know what I should have done, and I didn't, is I should have made sure that it fit with the width of the pocket that I cut, and it doesn't. Okay, okay, you know what? Plan B. Now, I am not going to match these up. Normally, I would match them up, right? And then I would sew this, put this into place, and I would sew this down. But because I blew it and didn't measure it first, I'm going to show you how I can punt. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. All right, so I'm going to move it over. I want Lincoln's name on there, and I want it to be close to the edge, right? Now, I'm going to leave it like this, and then I'm going to use a low-tack tape just to hold it in place at the top while I'm putting all the other pieces in. Then I'm going to put a little tiny bit, I mean a tiny, tiny dot, just to hold it in place of glue along this back edge. You can see there, I just put a, a smidge. And I am going to lay it here. Now, sometimes this wouldn't work because you could see the... Um, where I cut it off here. But because of the way I'm gonna make this, I can glue this down on my actual page in my book because this back pocket is a pocket created by gluing it down. So if it doesn't match perfectly right here, it doesn't really matter. Again, normally I would make it do it that way so that it's sturdier, but I want this quote to fit, so I'm going to go with plan B. All right. Now I'm going to move my sewing machine over and I'm going to try to change the angle just a bit. So bear with me if I, as I pull this out. So, that, okay, that was a bad idea. Started to pull my shelf over and angle that down. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Now, I, my machine has no problem going through transparency. If yours doesn't, then maybe that's not, you can sew it by hand if you choose to. I'm going to sew just this first edge. When I say the first edge, I mean the inside edge, the one that's inside it onto the pocket here. So I apologize for the sound, but it just holds it nice and tight and it gives me a narrow profile, which is what I want. All right, 
then I will sew around the rest of it. So if you're going to sew, sew the inside edge and then sew around the rest of it. If you're going to sew. If you're not going to sew, if you're just going to glue, well then it makes it easier to skip that step. I normally get a lot closer to um, the paper, so I'm just kind of hoping I'm in, I've got the right place. I have to think when I sew, it's not second nature to me like it is some people, so I have to stop for a minute there. Okay. And, and it's sewn. All right. And I can put these back. I keep I have a magnet on the plastic piece of the side of my machine so that this thread scissors are just used for thread and nothing else ever. All right, and that is my pocket. I'll cut off my extra threads. I know a lot of people like threads, but, um, and I do too sometimes actually, but for this, I didn't want any threads showing. All right, that is trimmed this take off my low tack tape. Watch, I'll tear it. Normally the low tack tape doesn't tear anything, but because I'm on camera. Uh, there we go, good. That worked. And then I'll just trim the rest of it and ink the rest of it. The last thing I'll do, uh, let's go with a larger divot. And again, I'm gonna eyeball it even though I'm not great at eyeballing. I want it a little bit deeper. And that is it there. And then I'll trim down this. And then just, you know, these these are super quick. I'll assembly line these. That's what I did with the other. And I don't think it took me an hour total. And I'm not speedy. So trim that down. And sometimes I'll put the tags in in advance, but sometimes I'll just wait to put the tags in until I'm putting it in a journal and I know how I'm going to use it. These also make a great card. Like if you're wanting to send some small gifts, you know, I put this on the front of a card and you've got a pocket, a pocket and a pocket, and that's the front of your greeting card. Now, this is another thing I do with, sorry about that, with the um, eyeshadow applicators. Just put a little bit of ink on it and then I'll, I'll run it over the thread. A lot of times I'll use the same color thread, an off-white thread, and then I'll just make it darker as I need it. And that's it. There is your three spot pocket or three pocket insert. And it really isn't thick unless you want to make it thick. I mean, you certainly can, but um, just a super handy little fun pocket to include. All right. Thank you very much for watching. If you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you so much for everyone who has participated in Mass Make March. You really have inspired me, and I know that you've inspired so many others. So have fun with your Mass Makes. Please feel free to share. Take care, and happy creating.